Hey, welcome to another Facebook Live here at the Houston Zoo. I'm Paul, and you're hanging out with us today in the carnivore department where we're gonna talk about birds. Specifically, we're gonna talk about three species of vultures that we have here in our department. Uh, so let's start off with the ones that are closest to us are large cape vultures. We actually have two of these individuals. The closest one to us is our female, the only female that we have in this committee of vultures. So we have Ziggy, our female. The next one up is our other cape vulture. His name is Nazgul. And then we have two other species here with us. We have our Ruffles vulture. His name is Bruce. So he looks very similar to the cape vultures, but you may notice that he has more darker feathering, a little bit more black on there. And then we have our small vultures here. We have hooded vultures oftentimes confused for being the baby vultures of these other two species, but in fact, they are uh, adults. And so, welcome to our Facebook Live with the carnivore department. We have a special activity today with our vultures. We're gonna be feeding them. And whether you know some information about vultures, they are actually really important for our environments because they eat dead things. And that's what we're gonna offer them today are some dead food items. So check out the food that we have today. This right here are ribs. And so we're gonna put those ribs out right now for our vultures to chow down on. And we have Jenna here. She's the one that's gonna be setting out the food. And we're gonna have Ziggy. She's always the first one to come down and eat the food. She's a little shy but she's the one that kind of dictates whether or not all the rest of the birds are gonna come down. And even when they do come down, she tends to be the one that chases off all the other birds. But this is pretty natural for these animals. They like to kind of come together. When they do come together, they're called a wake. And so a bunch of vultures, many different species, will come down and they will all feast on dead items. And so when talking about vultures, they play an important role in our ecosystem because they are the cleanup crew of the world. So they prevent disease from spreading because of the decaying animals that are killed, they clean them up. And so we have our three species that are all from Africa that are gonna be feasting on some of these ribs right now. And then in a little bit, we're actually gonna offer up some other food items. But right now we just have our cape vultures, and then we actually have one of our other hooded, our hooded vultures, this guy right here. His name is Flaps. If you come visit the zoo, you may see him from time to time on the ground. Flaps is one of our older individuals. He's right around five years old. Our youngest bird in this habitat is Ziggy, our female cape vulture. And again, she's the one that's eaten right here on this branch right now. Oh, and here we go. We are offering them also some rats. So our vultures actually get a wide variety of food options. Anything from mice, the ground up meat that you're probably seeing them eat also, the ribs, then we go to rats, and sometimes they even get rabbits. Each bird actually kind of has a preference for, for what they prefer to eat. Most oftentimes, all of our birds really enjoy the rats. They'll oftentimes fight with it. But what's unique about vultures is that they all play a different role in eating the different dead food items that they get. So while we see Ziggy and Nazgul about to squabble over parts of the rat, some of our smaller birds, or even in Africa, you'll oftentimes see some of the smaller birds kind of come in and eat smaller bits and pieces. Each vulture actually has different looking beaks and they're shaped differently so that they actually can eat the different food items that are for them to kind of pick at. So Nazgul here, he's got a cute little feather hanging on his head. But when you take a look at their heads, you'll notice as you probably may already assume, vultures tend to have kind of that physical bald feature look on them with a little bit of the uh, feathering on there. And that is thought to actually help them 
get into the carcasses that they are eating and keep themselves clean. It's also thought that they also have very little feathering around their heads so they actually can protect them from the sun. And so we got some questions coming in and we have Priscilla who has a question for me that is asking, what is their favorite food? Well, Priscilla, our vultures favorite food as I probably just briefly mentioned was the rats. But as I said that, we, I did mention that they do like to eat rabbits and we actually only offer rabbits w about once a month. And that tends to be one of the kind of coolest parts of seeing our, our vultures interact with one another and eat because they all will take part in opening up the rabbit and taking the pe pieces out that they want. And so even though you see some of the smaller guys kind of waiting out in the distance while all the bigger guys, what seems like take all the food right now, when the big guys are done, the smaller guys, our hooded vultures, will come down and they'll eat some of the scraps. And this is pretty much what happens in nature is that all the bigger animals will get their, their share first and then the smaller guys will come in and sneak away and grab something when the other animals aren't looking. And as I mentioned, these animals are from Africa. So what's cool about vultures is that these are animals that scavenge for food. And so what they do is they wait for a kill that maybe a lion may have taken down or a pride of lions. And once those lions are done getting their share, the vultures come in. But what's unique about this is that vultures have a really keen eyesight. They can see miles away. And they also have really good sense of smell. So even if it wasn't a lion that necessarily killed an animal, they are more than likely going to be the first ones to know about a fresh kill because well, they really like to eat dead things. And here we go. We have Bruce up here. Bruce is our oldest vulture. He is a whopping seven years old. It's actually pretty young for vultures because they can live up into their 30s. Uh, Ruppel's vultures can live into their 50s. But Bruce here is our oldest one. And he's starting to think about coming down. He's kind of shy, but we like Bruce. Bruce is going to get his share eventually if Ziggy lets him. Well, going back to our vultures and, and coming up to food that they find, like I said, they have really good sense of smell, really great eyesight. And when we're talking about Bruce here and his species, the Ruppel's vulture, this is a species that actually has the record for highest flying bird. So imagine that you're in an airplane flying across Africa and then all of a sudden you see a bird out your window. More than likely, that would, that would be your Ruppel's vulture. They actually have been recorded at being over 37,000 feet up in the air. And as Jenna tosses some of the food, you might start to hear them vocalize. Sounds like a dinosaur, a little And if you didn't hear that, it's a That is actually them kind of talking with one another and kind of bickering over who's gonna get the, the food. And Bruce here will kind of maneuver in and out and try and get his share. But yeah, Ruppel's vultures, highest flying bird. Vicky, you have a question? All right, Vicky's asking, what is their favorite spot in the habitat? All of our vultures really t tend to like hanging up at the top part of, the, of their habitat, all the way up in there in the rocks. So if you come and visit the zoo early in the morning, very likely you will see them up in these kind of cliff areas, which is natural for these animals actually also in the wild because they tend to have their nests up in cliff areas where they'll have their, their eggs. They'll feel, feel protected. Uh, it's harder for a lot of carnivores to get up there to maybe steal, steal their, their eggs or hunt these birds. Some of the natural predators for vultures are gonna be leopards and jackals they are generally the only animals that might potentially see these animals as a potential food source. Otherwise, these animals don't really have too many predators. Yvonne, she's asking a question about how fast can they fly? Great question, Yvonne. These are pretty cruise 
worthy birds. I wouldn't say they're very fast flying. They fly right around like 20 to 30 miles an hour. When they're way up in the air, they actually can just kind of coast along and they have the warm air that kind of helps keep them flying up. So if you ever see vultures here in, in the United States, here in Texas, you might see some circling around. That's actually them just using the warm air to kind of keep themselves afloat. And they're not really doing too much. They're just letting the warm air kind of hold their wings up so they can just kind of fly, fly around. And that's right around 20 miles an hour. So they're just kind of coasting along. Great question, Yvonne. And we even have Rachel, she's asking the next question. What enrichment or training do they get to do? So enrich enrichment is something that we like to provide for all of our animals here at the Houston Zoo on a daily basis. And as a carnivore keeper, working with birds, we have unique ways of providing enrichment for our, for our, our, our vultures. Some of the ways that we provide enrichment to get them thinking about their environment, to get them thinking about what they're doing every single day is by actually putting their food in different unique, what we call sometimes toys, uh, so that they become puzzle feeders. So if you take a rat and kind of hide it in a plastic log, then they got to figure out how to get their head in there and grab the food and tear off the pieces while another vulture maybe comes down and tries to also take it. It's really great because these are just some same things that they do in the wild. They have to compete for the food and work towards it. And this is a great way for them to exhibit their natural behaviors in the wild. Now, when it comes to training, these are very shy animals, very shy birds. They have to worry about a lot of predators still, even though they don't have necessarily that many. But imagine that you have to eat alongside a lion. Well, they're gonna be very, this is not a professional term, but very flighty. They, they might fly away rather than stick around because they might get taken down by a lion. So whenever we work with them, we do a lot of relationship building. So we get them to just feel comfortable with us getting close to them. And then one of our big goals for our department is, is really just getting them comfortable to get onto propping that, you know, can help us to assess their bodies, their body conditions, or even get, you know, can get weights on them. We know that Bruce here, he weighs right around 15 pounds. And we also know that Nazgul, he weighs right around the same amount uh, as, as Bruce here. So, you know, we're making great steps. Now, unfortunately for our three vulture species, which we're very excited to have here at the zoo, we've not actually had all three species ever. And to have them all together is really awesome. Uh, unfortunately though, this is a species, all three of them, that are endangered in the wild, in Africa. And the biggest threat to them is actually poaching. And you might be asking yourself, well, why would anybody want to poach these birds? They just eat dead things. Well, oftentimes poachers see these animals as threats to their, their kills, and they'll oftentimes poison animals that also end up being animals that these birds eat and they eat that poison and kill off these birds and so here at the houston zoo we help to protect many different species including our vultures by supporting and training anti-poachers in africa we call them scouts anti-poaching scouts so they can remove traps when they find them they can apprehend poachers and help to prevent the rapid decline of these birds in Africa. So anytime you come and see these animals here at the Houston Zoo, you're saving them out in the wild. And we thank you guys for joining us and when you guys come to the zoo, because you guys are also helping to save our vultures. So I guess that's all the time that we might have for our vulture Facebook Live today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next Wednesday at 11 o'clock for our other Facebook Live. Otherwise, you guys have a great day.